Welcome back. This is the Parent Life Show, and I'm your host, Katrina Bowl. I am discussing Team Parent with China Richardson and Shymere Williams, as well as Michelle Wade, from is the director of Teen Services. Uh, Shy, I want to go back to um, when you said you know your first encounter, or when you found out that you were pregnant, um, and you said that you had a boyfriend. Then was that your first boyfriend? Not my first boyfriend. No. Or the was it your first boyfriend that you had a sexual encounter with? No. Okay. When was the very first time? Five or six months prior. And how did you find yourself in that situation? Again, prayer pressure. I felt like it was something I needed to do to fit in. And so did you arrange, like, you know, called him up and... No, it was just like a friendly get-together and he brought it up and, again, I'm the type of person that struggles to say no. Mm. So, you know, that was another factor. I didn't feel right telling him no if I felt like something that I had to do, you know? So... So did you feel like he led you into doing something that you didn't want to do? In a way, yes. I think he knew exactly what he was doing, yes. How did you find yourself in this situation when you said that you felt like you were almost set up uh, to go into your first encounter? Mm -hmm. Well, you mean when I lost my virginity? Yes. Okay, it was a school break and you know, you're home, you don't have much to do, you're too ill for camps and mm -hmm. your poor have friends and you know, you want to chill together, I guess in a sense. So. I went and chilled, and mm -hmm. that chilling led to something else. First, how would you advise your friends you know, or younger girls to avoid this kind of situation? To get it in your head that it's a special moment. You know, you don't want to, once you lose your virginity, you, you don't get it back. That's something you lose, you cannot get it back. So you want to wait until it's a special moment and you're ready for it. You're in a committed relationship and your head's on right, you're protected, you know the risks, and I'm fine. And what would you say to parents to be more, uh, if they can be more vigilant, <laughs> you know, how can they either know in a, I wouldn't say in advance, but, or even if their child's had that first encounter? I don't think you should have to watch over your child. I think you should definitely have the sex talk, which I really did it with my parents. You know, it was always, are you having sex? No, you better not. It wasn't really like a sit down talk and like, hey, here's the things that happen when you have sex. Here's the things to look out for. They should be ready for it, you know? I didn't really have that talk with my parents. So I think that parents should really sit down and it is an awkward conversation, I would imagine. But I really have that talk and then you wouldn't have to watch over your child and be wondering what she's doing because you form a kind of trust, you know? And to all the TV shows, teen parents, teen moms, you know, as I mentioned uh, very early on in the show, what are your thoughts on these shows? I think it does, in a sense, glamorize it. It doesn't give you the true, raw, uncut version of being a teenager and being pregnant. It doesn't show how people criticize you, how you're up late at night, like I said before, with work. And it, it doesn't really show that. It, it does glamorize it, in a sense, which it's sad. But I feel it does come it. I think if they're going to show their type of things on TV, they should be more raw and more, you know, uncut. Do you think that alcohol or um, any sort of drugs may have been involved? And do you think that um, that may have altered your decision making towards having sex? Um, I was a rabble child. I, I hung out with people older than me. So, you know, drinking and smoking was something that was going on regularly. And, being like you know pro pressured I felt like I had to also and so kind of help decisions because I didn't have to weigh if it was good or bad I didn't have to think further down the road you know. Shah you've spoken a lot about peer pressure how did peer pressure uh, really affect you? Well as a teenager um, my mother was working two jobs so I, I kind of lost the connection I have with her slowly I didn't have that person to go and connect with when I got home from school, I didn't really have the talks, and my father was off with his other family playing house. So, you know, I, I, I relied heavily on my friends, and they became like a support system, and what, what they did, I felt I needed to do, not only to fit in, but it became kind of like a family there with my friends, you know. They, they showed me many things, along with the bad things, but, yeah. And Along with those, I guess, bad things, is that when you ended up losing your virginity? 
it, it led to that. It seemed cool, it seemed fun, you know, the things that you do with your friends, like drinking and smoking, which at that age you shouldn't be doing, but even the risk, it was like a thrill for me. It's like, I know I shouldn't, but it's fun, I'm doing it anyways. It became almost addictive, but. Looking back, how would you have said no? Could you have said no? Could I have said no? I don't think I could have. You know, it, even now, um, I don't think I could have gone back and had a different mindset. But um, you know, it, it made me become the person I am now. The profession is a real thing. It really is because a lot of people are being pressured into the things that they don't want to do, and they don't have somebody there to tell you, you know, this is wrong. Like you know, what you're doing is wrong, and it's not going to work out for the long run. It may seem fun now, but it's not going to take you anywhere. Like, you know, you have these friends who give you this advice, but that your age, the, what, what, they haven't seen life for what it really is, so, you know. Shai, you've definitely spoken very maturely, and I want to say I am very proud of you and China as well. And uh, we are going to finish up, ask our last question to uh, Michelle. Mm -hmm. And I just want you to just share with us the services of teen services, how um, either parents or young girls can get in touch with um, the services. Uh, teen services, we're still operating. Um, we are located uh, number four, Happy Valley Road, right next to Fort Hamilton. We do provide community prevention outreach services um, to individuals as well as we are available to speak at the schools and to church groups, community groups, youth groups. Um, we do have services in Cedar Bridge, Barclay, and Dalwood Middle School. And like I said, we're open to go to any school to speak to young people about uh, at-risk behaviors and prevention and how to cope and how to refuse being uh, pressured. Um, we also have a residence for young mothers that have found themselves homeless. And we run that program for eight families. And right now we have six families, so we're almost full. And so that's 13 people in our residence. And, and as you know earlier, we mentioned the Outstanding Teen Awards with both China and Shymere were nominated for both of them, I think, for Perseverance? Yes. For Perseverance. So we're very busy. Um, we've been a supportive agency for over 40 something years, 45, 46 years. And so um, we're not glamorizing teen pregnancy either. We are trying to help people have a second chance in their life so that they can go on and um, be better people in the community and be, it's an investment. You know, it doesn't look like it at the beginning, but when you hear these two young ladies talking, saying that you know they want to make something of their life, then it's an investment so okay. that they can be somebody and their children can be somebody. Everybody uh, takes a tough road at some point in their life, and so if we look at it that way, then we will have a better community instead of um, all the negative thoughts and stuff. We're not glamorizing it; we're just saying give people a chance to um, move in a different direction. Ladies, thank you so much for being on Parent Life Show and importantly for being so candid and open about your answers, about your life. Thank you, Michelle, for being here with us. We also want to say a huge thank you to the Fairmont Southampton Princess for allowing us to film here. And if you're looking for a great place for your family to dine out, Wicked's Restaurant is the place to be. If you would like to, if you liked our video, and you would like to subscribe to our newsletter, visit our website, www.bermudaparentmagazine.com. And this is Parent Life Show brought to you by Bermuda Parent Magazine.